Good evening everyone. I just put the light on. I thought it'd be clever and be early and then I realised I forgot to switch my light on. Um, good evening everyone and welcome to Tracy's Cakes. So this is another evening showing you how to do some more cocoa butter painting um, and tonight we are looking at another Harry Potter cookie. So we have had all the new Harry Potter cookie cutters in from PME and we've been slowly working our way through them, painting them over the last couple of weeks. We'll probably do one more week next week before Christmas and then we'll start again in the new year. Um, but at the moment we are looking today at Hogwarts so tonight's paint will be on Hogwarts which is the cookie cutter that we have got in from PME so we've got a big delivery coming in tomorrow and on that delivery we have got all of the Harry Potter cookie cutters plus we have got two new ones as well not necessarily music to the ears for those that have already bought them but we have got two new ones coming in as well um, tomorrow we have got the sorting hat and we have also got the dark mark coming as well which I think is that thing that appears in the sky uh, to connect with Voldemort anyway something along those lines look at me sounding all clever and Harry Potter-esque uh, but that's what's coming in uh, tomorrow as well so not only the ones that we've already been in use but we've also got these other ones coming as well so the address up on the screen at the moment is my website traceskakes.co.uk a shorter and simpler way to get to my stuff is to go through letshopcakelive.co.uk so if you want to go and find some of these bits and pieces they are probably easier to find in that section than going through the whole website because uh, everything on there is everything that we normally do for our shopping channel on a Saturday morning so you will find everything together in one place. Um, talking of which so I am going to be live um, this weekend but I'm normally live on a Saturday I'm now going to be live on Sunday this week so Sunday's live will be at 10 o'clock rather than Saturday so if you tune in on Saturday you'll have to wait till Sunday um, because I've got a prior engagement to go to on Saturday morning. Quite a big one my daughter's singing on the steps of St Paul's Cathedral so I can't miss that so um, I'm going to see that and then I'll be live on Sunday so if you do want to come and um, watch Let's Shop Cake Live on Sunday we'll be live on Facebook well, not this page we'll be live on Let's Shop Cake Live or we will be live on my YouTube channel and I'm going to put that up now because we are actually running out of YouTube at the moment as well we do stream all of our lives out of both so if you are looking for this live to watch um, back you can either watch it back here or you can watch it back on Let's Shop Cake Live either of those no not Let's Shop Cake Live I've got that on the brain here <laughs> which is at Tracy Man Cakes or my YouTube channel which is also called at Tracy Man Cakes just to confuse everybody I normally share these videos across all my platforms anyway so if you can't find it it will be in one of the many so <laughs> it'll turn up somewhere um you'll find me eventually so don't worry about that so over the last few weeks we've been um looking at all the new PME stuff that's come in um we have had all the new cookie cutters in as I say there are two more that are coming out this week as well one is the sorting hat and the other one is the dark mark they are on the website now to order um I have started to put limits on the Harry Potter stuff now so there is a countdown going on with the Harry Potter stuff so if you do want those two to. Um, whatever stock is showing is what we're going to be having in now before Christmas. Um, the Hogwarts Express, which is the train, um, that one is, um, I think we've only got eight left of that one now, um, and that includes what's coming in on the delivery because we've already got pre-orders for that. So if you do want the train, the Hogwarts Express, um, you'll need to be fairly quick on that one. I've got a couple of them here. I've literally got one Hedwig here because that's all I've got. Uh, so that's the Hedwig one. I just want to give you an idea of what they look like. Let me show you on this camera it's probably better so that's what they look like they're quite big these cookie cutters I think a lot of you have been quite surprised when you receive them how big they are they are most of them are about between 10 and 11 centimeters so they are quite big and what we've been doing is basically making some cookies and painting them so that you can see all the marks and everything coming up on there it's a little bit like painting by numbers and we do this with cocoa butter and that's what I'm going to show you shortly. Now we have also got this one which is the silicon mat so this one is good for pressing sugar paste into so if you I'll turn it that way a little bit so the light doesn't shine too much on it you can see they've got the Deathly Hallows, the star, Harry Potter and some glasses and there's some magic wands in there. The idea is you roll out your sugar paste or your fondant and you can cut out little circles then and pop them onto cupcakes like so as shown in the picture 
we of course would be dusting them and painting them and well I would I say we <laughs> me <laughs> would be dusting them and doing all sorts of bits and pieces with them as well um, so there are quite a few bits that you can do with it you can wrap it around a cake as well which is quite nice it's more subtle Harry Potter rather than sort of full-on Harry Potter that some of this stuff is and then of course we've got the three characters which I'm going to reserve to paint next year um, I think we'll do Harry one evening he is rather fun isn't he we'll get them all done at some point um, but we will be painting Harry Potter um, shortly so we might even do him next week actually maybe we'll do him as a just before Christmas treat or something but he comes in a set of three with Hermione and Ron um, and again they are I think that's so 10 centimeters well yeah everything seems to be geared up along the lines of 10 centimeters so those are available as well so there are I think there are 10 different Harry Potter things that are on the website and I say the easiest place to find them is to go through Let's Shop Cake Live rather than Tracy's Cakes. You will end up on Tracy's Cakes but it's just quicker to find them through that website that's pointing to the right direction. So if you do want to have a look at the Harry Potter stuff hopefully you'll be inspired by some of the painting that I have done over the next couple of weeks or last week, this week and maybe next week as well and it will give you an idea for doing some painting yourself, maybe getting involved in some cake classes that would be nice wouldn't it so um, we have a full cake school as well I do teach cake painting that's my big thing so if you want to join me in the new year we're having beginners cocoa butter painting challenge as well so if you want to join me in the new year and learn how to do cocoa butter painting then that's the website that you need there so if you nip over to that one you can sign yourself up and come and do some cake painting with me so it's the right time of year it's cold it's not very nice outside it's very dark where it is in the UK anyway it, but might not be somewhere else in the world but in the UK it is um, and cake painting is a really nice thing to sit and do so if you do want to have a go at it um, either before Christmas or after Christmas the website address is shown up there at the moment and we do have give vouchers as well also for the cake school but as, um, also for let shop cake live as well so and they will be emailed out so if you want a present you actually want this year uh, do drop large hints to those who are saying what do you want for Christmas and um, we can point you in the direction of the gift vouchers which you'll find on that page and also let shop cake live as well so it's obviously very busy at the moment so we have got a lot of mail order going out at the moment we are almost up to date we've we're not far off it um but just please remember as well at the moment that we do use royal mail um royal mail actually is moving a lot lot quicker than last year so last year when we had all the strikes it was a major disaster this year it is actually moving a little bit quicker but the post that normally takes two to four working days is taking more like seven so just be aware if you are ordering anything just to allow a little bit of extra time to make sure you get what you want I've had a few people contact me and say I haven't received it I haven't received it and then boom it turns up so if you do contact us the first thing we're going to say to you is you need to wait two weeks to make sure it is actually lost um, because in most cases we are talking nine out of ten everything does arrive unbelievably or not as the case may be so this is a live if you are watching us live and you want to say hello or you want to ask me a question about cake painting or harry potter as long as it's not a question about the film because even though i've seen all the films i can't quote you on any of them um i'm more than happy to answer any questions while we're live so do let me know if you are watching it after the live has taken place and you have a question do get in contact via the website and i will happily try and answer them as best i can so let's take a look at what we did last week so let's have a look at that first so last week we painted this one which is the harry potter crest and we use this cookie cutter here so they're all like this they've all got um they're all a cutter with an embosser so all we did was emboss some sugar paste and then we pressed it into the sugar paste and then you can see there we go that it made this pattern here that we then painted. So that's what we did last week. And this week, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Hogwarts. So this is, let me move that out of the way for a second. So we're going to look at Hogwarts today. So there we go, that's the Hogwarts cookie cutter. So it's a bit simpler than this one. Trust me to start difficult, that's very typical. Um, we're going to do Hogwarts this evening. It is a really nice one. I did spend a bit of time thinking about the colors on this because the 
automatic reaction is to paint everything grey but actually I found quite a few pictures of Hogwarts with slight sort of twist on the colours so that's what I've done for this I've actually sort of made the building a different colour from the roof and it works really well because otherwise you'd find the whole thing would just blur into one mass of grey um, so I think you'll agree with me when I show you shortly um, what I've done um, that it works. I'm just going to move that up there a second and put that there so you can see I've got a cookie already prepared. Top tip for you when you do press this into sugar paste then put it onto a cookie for example make sure your towers are straight otherwise they're not. <laughs> it's as simple as that and it only reveals itself when you start painting and then you realise that one of the towers is going off to the left or the right so make sure when you put it down you lay it down very carefully to make sure you actually do get what it is that you want. I can see one wonky tower there that I need to deal with. So we'll sort that out as we go. I'm sure I'll spot it before um, before you, I get to you. Now I've got one more thing to say before I get started. Now, for some of you know, I've been to the Netherlands this weekend. So my daughter lives in the Netherlands and my daughter has a kitten. And I probably don't need to say much more, but it actually looks like my hands have been, I've fallen in a bush or <laughs> something along those lines because I am absolutely covered in scratches. Um, so I'm just going to say that <laughs> before I get going. If you suddenly see my hands, I think, what on earth has she done? Yes, I have been playing with a kitten all weekend. And yes, it has completely ripped my hands to shreds. So um, <laughs> if you are seeing me covered in all of these scratches, then you will know it is because for that reason and that reason, alone I haven't actually sort of fallen in a bramble bush or something but yes I have got some marks on me at the moment that are um completely kitten related he's in trouble that cat uh so there we go so I just sort of let you know that because otherwise you're gonna wonder what's wrong with me so let's move these bits and pieces out of the way and let's bring in the painting system and we'll talk through that so that you can see how this works okay so we have got here a chrome food warmer I'm going to just light this candle that's in the middle here. So this is something that I've just bought off Amazon. It doesn't have a particular place in cake decorating. So it's not meant to be a piece of cake decorating equipment. And on top of there, I'm just going to put my metal paint palette, which you'll see there. Um, and then we'll just go around quickly so you can have a look at it. Um, you've got here, um, so the the cocoa butter is here. So it's solid at the moment. What's happening is the heat under here will heat up the metal paint palette, make it hot, and then these two will melt. Now this will get really super hot, so you need to be very careful when you're painting. Um, we've got here black, we've got here the color cream, which is a sugar flare color, the color brown, and the color white. This has been left from something else. I left it on there because I thought, well, I might use it. I don't know. I hadn't planned to, but this is actually uh, Wonder Dust Bright Gold because I've been doing some other painting bits and pieces today so I've always got something on the go. Um, the two paintbrushes we're going to use tonight are paintbrush uh, zero, one and also two and three so actually most of the paintbrushes tonight let me just find number two so that's actually one I forgot to get there it is paintbrush two and three there it is not one two three that's it there. OK, so those are the brushes we're going to be using. Um, so when I teach, I normally refer back to these numbers because then it's nice and easy for me to be able to go, you need brush number one, you need brush zero, and then you know what brushes it is that you're picking up at the time. So it makes life a little bit easier for you and a little bit easier for me. And no, Donna, I have not been on the Prosecco. <laughs> I have definitely been playing with a cat so I have to say he's made a right mess of my hands I'm going to give you a very quick tour now of what he's done you little monkey so yeah and also on there he's had a right go at me <laughs> I'm going to visit Kelly again and be attacked by their cat but um, he's only little so we let him off right so you can see this all melting here now and then what we're going to do is get a little bit of kitchen roll as you can hear me taking off the roll in the background there we go and we're going to use this to clean our brushes as we go along to change color I'm just going to pop that brush into there for example and just twist it on the uh, kitchen roll paper towel and just check that there is no um, color left in it so again this one's been painting cream earlier today so you can see it coming out there well sometimes when I finish painting completely I will just take the brushes and just wash them out under the sink but when I'm painting like this I just usually clean them between colours just using cocoa butter so yeah yes this kitten does have an extremely <laughs> strong set of teeth on I'm back home now with my elderly cats who do not do what that kitten has done to me <laughs> 
<laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You forget, though, what they're like. Right, I just dropped a bit of cocoa butter there, so it's a little tidy up. There we go. Right, so, of course, the same as last week. When I first start painting, it's going to be quite tricky to see this because, obviously, there is a lot of detail on here, and it's white at the moment. So I've cut out white sugar paste um, in order to be able to do this. Now, we're going to treat the these bits here the building that's the turrets isn't it in a different color and if you look across google at um, hogwarts you will see this picture um it isn't the most common picture of hogwarts but um i think it's the best represented on this particular paint so i think you'll agree with me when we get going so we're going to start with paintbrush number two we're going to grab and then turn this round so we can see our colors there we go we're going to grab some cream and some brown and some white so we're going to mix those three colors together we want it more white uh, lighter than this at the moment but those are the two colors that we need and that's going to be our main sort of building color so cream brown white okay so we'll mix that together like so and then actually to be honest i'm not going to use paintbrush two because that's going to be too big let's use paintbrush one I painted this before I went to the Netherlands, so I haven't quite got my framing gear again. So I've done a test run of this already, so I know what the pitfalls are, she says. <laughs> Let's start over here. So this is the building here that we're going to start with. So we're just going to literally follow the lines. And as I say, this will become more clear as I paint along. So just bear with me at the start because it's always a little bit tricky to see on camera. So the PME Hogwarts cookie cutters that have come out, um, you don't have to paint them like this if you don't want to. I've obviously decided that I am going to because um, painting is my thing. Um, but there are lots of different options that you can use with them if you just want to sort of paint and sort of stamp them out onto, um, you know, something, just some ordinary cookie dough. You can do that as well. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Um, but I think this is also, they could also be used for a cake. So if you just, if you're making a Harry Potter cake and you'd like Hogwarts on it, you can cut it out and paint it as well. So it's quite a nice way of doing this. I'm just going to switch this heater off next to me because it's extremely hot in here now. All right. Put that down there like so. There's a little gap you'll find that I've, had to sort of push my paint down into to get to it so okay you can see that all right that looks okay doesn't it let me just well i just need to plug my phone in hold on that's my other camera make sure i actually survive the live there we go that's better let's tip that a little bit more that way there perfect right let's keep going so you're just going to work your way along the buildings, which I think is the easiest way to do this because you need to be able to identify where everything is on this because it's um, otherwise it looks like a bit of a muddle. And again, if you paint in the wrong area, it doesn't matter because you can just go straight over it. Um, you can just go straight over it with a dark colour. So it doesn't really matter too much at this point. And because you've got little windows on here as well, you'll see those start to pick up as we go through the paint. So you'll see they will appear, which is quite nice. I'll go across there as well. And then there's a taller bit of the building up here that we need to capture. There we go. So I'll pick that up. And this bit here. So it's sort of like a big row of sort of towers and turrets, isn't it? Hogwarts, if you think about it from the film. That's what it is. And come across here. And then this bit that it stood on, again, I looked at it and it, it just looks like one massive sort of rock. So we'll, we'll go with that. We'll run with the the rock look we've just got to remember of course if we're doing lots of grey we've got to do lots of shadings otherwise we're going to end up with a very kind of flat looking hogwarts so we need to be aware of what we're doing on that front which of course we will there we go how are we doing 
There is a lot of detail on this cutter, but I don't think it's um, and it's very recognisable. And I but I don't think it's a particularly diff difficult paint. This one, I think it's much easier than one we did last week. One we did last week is much more trickier. This one is a lot lot easier to see. Um, and I think the other one, even though it is instantly recognisable, um, this one is a bit easier to to work out right let's mix up some gray so we're going to move that round grab some cocoa butter tiny sort of speck of black and then we'll mix some whiting because we want a kind of light gray color to start with we don't really want the roofs um, to be that dark anyway we will start by marking them in again they've got little sort of you can see little holes in there all of the Harry Potter cookie cutters are or will be available. They are available. They'll be even more available tomorrow morning when the rest of the delivery arrives. Um, the one that we're most short on is the Hogwarts train. Um, the rest of them are fine. I don't think we've got any other issues with anything else. It's just though that particular one. I wouldn't even say we've got issues with it. We have got stock. I'm just saying if you do want it before Christmas, you probably need to do it sooner rather than later um, as with everything the post is very busy at the moment so we're going to come across there like so there's a little roof down there be careful don't miss it just pop that in and then or roof turret whatever you want to call it and you just have to follow them along Your brush is going to go down into the thing, but you will find, of course, that you're going to be. Um, so as you sort of paint down, your brush will go down the side of it and that's fine. You're going to be painting a bit of background anyway, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I wouldn't overthink it too much. I think the thing is with these cookie cutters is you spend too much time looking at all the detail. You're going to be here forever, so just keep it moving as best you can. It's a bit of fun and it takes roughly, I mean, my other one did take me about an hour and a half. This one is a bit quicker. This is more like well, less than an hour, I'd say, with this one. Um, especially when you've done it once before, which I have. And so it's not quite as demanding as the other one is. And you've got less colours to deal with as well, because you've only really got greys um, and this sort of sandy brown colour. There we go. Like so. There we go. You see, it all just comes out very quickly. Um, do I put anything on the print so it does not stick? Um, I Normally, you can see, actually, I've put a little bit of icing sugar on here. So I've just literally take, just sprinkled that with some icing sugar. You can always put some icing sugar on the sugar paste, but make sure you sort of, you know, make do that with the surface of it so it doesn't become sticky. Then press it down, press it down hard to make sure you get all the print um, and then peel it back very carefully. Don't make it too thin. I think that's the key to this. If you look at the side of my sugar paste there, it's relatively thick. Um, and the reason I've got it relatively thick is if it's too thin, when I'm pulling it off this, it's going to rip. So you do have to do it maybe a little bit thicker than you would do normally. Right, let's go to back to paintbrush two. Now, we're going to just paint those rocks. Um, oh, no, we're not. I've missed a bit. Right, that's because I was talking. This is a bridge. So we're going to paint just going across here in this light grey colour. This is a famous bridge, isn't it? So we need to make sure we've got that in. So I'll just paint that over the top. And again, you can feel, um, you can just easily paint this because it's all raised. So you know which bits you're meant to be painting. It's nice and straightforward. Okay, so we'll go up a size now. We'll go to paintbrush number two. We'll grab a little bit more black and we'll make the bottom bit a little bit darker. So we need to just make a stronger stronger lot of grey and then we're just going to start actually we won't make it too strong because I need some shading in there so we're just going to start doing the rocks that it's sitting on so we'll just dab that in because there is quite a lot of detail on this 
in order to kind of get into every sort of nook and cranny this will be easier just to dab it in place like so so if you've got any other questions about this harry potter stuff while i'm online i'm very happy to help you so if you do have any questions with regards to the cookie cutters availability what they are there's platform nine and three quarters as well that's a lovely easy one to paint so if you'd like a nice beginner's one to paint actually the no, i don't think the hogwarts one is that difficult to paint um, the hogwarts crest which i did last week is tricky but not impossible none of it's impossible that's what i reckon anyway so we'll just come across here we'll just paint it one color to start with before we start putting any sort of shading in there we'll just keep it all the same Let's not complicate things to start with. And it does make it a lot, lot easier to see on camera as well. So we'll just paint along in there because, say, it's quite deep. Make sure you sort of dab your brush into the little gaps just to make sure you get everything. Like so. So I teach painting online, as I mentioned earlier. So if you do fancy having a go, this is a really good way of just trying it and seeing how you get on. So if you do fancy having a go at this or patchwork cutters is the other thing that I like to use um, just to get people to pick up a paintbrush to start with. We've got really nice, cute characters for Christmas. You'll find those on Let's Shop Cake Live. We did those at Cake International. I've done lots of lives on my um, YouTube channel. You'll see lots of different lives on painting. Um, if you want to have a go at painting something that's fixed, um, that's probably a really good way to start. And then once you've done that and you want to have a go at painting a bit more, then you can come and join my cake school. And we can do more painting together. There we go. All right. So that gives me the base of the Hogwarts there. So look how quickly that's come together. It's really, really quick. This one, you'll be surprised, actually. Um, how quickly it comes together right we're not going to touch the outside edge of it at the moment we're going to leave that until it almost last this is obviously wet at the moment cocoa butter takes one to two minutes to dry so we're going to leave that and go back to the original building and we're just going to make this color a little bit stronger so i'm just going to take paintbrush number one grab a bit more of this sort of creamy color a bit more brown just make it a little bit darker and then we're going to just Add some bit more colour to it, just so it's not completely flat. And this is what makes all the difference with things when you paint them. It's just a little bit of extra shading rather than making everything the same colour. We can just go back over and it really doesn't take a lot of time and it does make a lot of difference. And that's what I spend a lot of my time teaching is just trying to get over the fact you just need to do a little bit more to make it that much better. So the Hogwarts cookie cutters, I did mention this again, I think last week, they make great stocking fillers because they're not too expensive um, and they fill up a stocking. <laughs> I can't put it any other way. Um, there are lots of, um, they're quite big, so they will take up a bit of space. So if you're looking for a sort of cheap um, fill up the stocking, this is, these are good for that, I have to say. Kelly and Charlotte, you might be getting them, girls. <laughs> Not that they should be having stockings at 24 and 27, but they probably will, or 23. Kelly will tell me off because I keep ageing her at the moment. Okay, there we go. I'll just get back over that with a little bit more brown. 23 and 27 let's get that right i'll be told off later otherwise okay so you can see the difference already it is making an awful lot of difference there we go penny's already done some with her granddaughters and yeah it is it's going to be it's a really lovely lovely thing to do because it's not too complicated and um, i'm all for not complicated i can tell you that Right, let's make these turrets a little bit darker. So I'm just cleaning out my brush with my kitchen roll. There we go. And we're just going to grab a tiny bit of black. Where are we? A little bit of black. And we'll just go into this grey here. Oops, maybe a bit too much black there. Let's turn it down a bit. Went a bit mad then. A bit more white. So it's not too dark. 
Well, I've got my wonder dusts here, so I am going to potentially have a little play with these, maybe. I don't know. I have got them sort of on standby. So with the turrets, um, I just wanted to make them a little bit darker, but I don't want to overwhelm them. So I'm just going to just run a little bit of colour over them because the background is very dark on this and I want to make sure that they still stand out and if we make them too dark they're going to disappear okay so don't make these too dark simple as that go quick brush over those um right and don't forget the bridge so we'll just go down the bridge go down the side of the bridge actually so that they start to stand out a bit actually going to put some dark behind it in a minute but you can see that starting to make that look a bit more 3d we've got a gap there i'm just going to run my brush along there we're actually going to put a bit of dark color of shading in there later anyway so i'm not too worried about that okay right now let's uh grab some of the dark again dark gray let's put a tiny bit more in there um, we're going to start to look at some of the shading. So we would be having a little bit darker at the top where Hogwarts itself is. So we put some colour in there and we'll just bring that down there a little bit. And then we've got these sort of crevices they put on here. So we'll follow those. We'll assume that they knew what they were doing when they put these in. <laughs> and we'll just add those in. Another one there, so we'll just add in a bit darker colour and just see if we can make it less flat. That's the idea with this. We don't want to make them so dark that they, you know, look really fake. So we don't want to do that. We want to make it look like they belong. We're going to go down the side of these by this bridge. And bring that down there and again over here oh up along there we're going to go back in a minute we're going to make it even darker but i just wanted to get a layer of darker gray on there first before i attack it with something even darker because i need to be careful here because i don't want to end up making it making it too solid there we go. You can see that now looks a little bit more um, lifted. So the brush I'm using is still paintbrush number one. The brush I'm using to spread the colour around is paintbrush three. So those are the colours that I'm using at the moment, all the paintbrushes I'm using at the moment. Right, go in there. So we do have sets of paintbrushes on the website. So you'll find them in sets of five or you can buy them individually. Right, let's grab some black. And we'll just make that really super dark now. So now we'll go right up into the top of the of Hogwarts here. Along right along the edge. Let's get right into those gaps. Because we want to make sure it could even be a smidge darker, I think. So you always get a better view on camera than me. It always, whenever I look up, it always looks much better. I think it's the angle I have to look at it at. So you've got a really good view of what's happening. So again, we're going in a lot, lot darker up there now. Bring that down. And down this side as well. Go. And then using that darker colour, I'm just going to go right down to the bottom here. I want it to be nice and dark in the middle. Um, we're going to just paint down inside of that bridge. So, still using paintbrush one here, we're just going to just dab some colour in there. They are actually raised in there, so it's not too difficult to do without actually sort of marking everything else. It's fairly straightforward. Go. You can still see the bridge just about. 
can always go back and make it lighter again if we need to. Um, you can just grab your... So if you ever paint over anything and you want to make it a bit brighter, just go back and just paint over it like so, because it's dried now, you see. So if I just go back over with my brush, that will pick it up. And you'll be able to see it a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. Right. So that's that bit so far. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to um, have a look at the windows. So the windows at Hogwarts, we're going to do them all in a dark grey colour. So we're going to grab again. We'll do it. I can't remember how I did this now, whether I did it paintbrush one or zero. I'm just trying to think my way through this out loud. <laughs> Let's grab some black, but we don't want it to be neat black. We want it to have some white in it. So even though when I put it down, it's still going to look black, it will not be black. Um, and the reason behind that is it just takes it the sharpness away from it. It's a little bit too sharp otherwise. And we're just going to, yeah, it's paintbrush one. Just going to literally put the paintbrush inside the windows. And we're doing this now because we're going to go back and put a little bit of white in them later on, but we need this to dry first. So this is the next thing we need to do. And this is where you're obviously going to see all the windows starting to appear on the Hogwarts building. So again, just push the brush in. Because they're square, they're not really suitable for the dotting tool, but we are going to use that again in a second. So you'll see why I've used a, a paintbrush. And because they're quite deep, you can actually sort of push the brush into it. And for those of you that like to watch everything in under sort of 30 seconds, I have actually made a TikTok of this as well. So if you do follow me on TikTok, if you haven't already, it's at Tracy Man Cakes. And you will see a number of videos on there that I've done of stuff that I sell and make. All done at high speed to act as a reminder of how to do some of this stuff. So if you are thinking, oh, I'd like to do that. And then when you come to get your cookie cutters, you've forgotten, you can go back and watch it on there. But if you need the long version, then obviously you're going to have this on this page and on Facebook and YouTube. So both places. Lots of places to watch. So I'm just popping this in there. You can see the brush goes in quite easily and it's picking them up quite well. You can see it's quite detailed, but I think you are getting a, quite a good view coming up on the screen now as the paint's going in. Okay, and we head over here. I need a bit more cocoa butter in there. So once my paint starts to dry out, I'm having a job to fill my windows. So a little bit more cocoa butter just to make the paint flow a bit. These windows down here a bit bigger. So just dab that up and down there. And we've got a sort of a windowy thing going on there. So we'll fill that in some darker paint I think it's a could be a window it could be a door I'm not too sure it doesn't really matter I don't think it's such an intricate building it doesn't matter okay and then up here some more windows and here as well yeah, just work across this uh, methodically, just checking where you're going, just to make sure you've not missed anything. Um, and then go up onto the roofs, because there are some up here as well. Good tiny ones. Not in every bit of the roof, but in some bits you'll see them. There's a few over here. I think that's it. Oh, there's one there, and there's one there. Is that it? Just double check everything. I think so. It doesn't actually matter because I can always put um, put some more back in again. So we're going to let that dry now. And while that's drying, we're going to start doing the background. So the background seems to be 
what makes this cookie really pop. So in other words, what makes it really stand out. So again, we're gonna to go to the darkest gray we can get away with. So not black. We're gonna have, um, I'm gonna turn it round. So we've all got the same view and we're gonna just go in with some dark gray, but it will look like black, all right? But it's not, it's dark gray. And very carefully with paintbrush one. I don't know why I started in the middle, but I have. <laughs> it's a very random place to start. We're going to paint over the white. We're going to let the paintbrush go down the side of these turrets and get right up into there. So this is where last time when I did this, I then had to go back and just fill in any little bits I couldn't get my paintbrush into because it became sort of quite tricky. So we will be checking this out shortly when we've done it to see if there's anything we need to go back and paint to cover up any kind of white sugar paste that's showing. Now I could have started on a grey sugar paste or I could have started on black sugar paste um, but actually I think this is easier and that's why I've done it. Okay so I've done it for that reason and that reason alone. I'm going to come in a bit closer to these. Take that right down. Other side of the building. You can see now why you don't want to make those turrets too dark, because if you do make them too dark, you're not going to be able to see them against this dark background that's going on at the moment. Otherwise, it will be, whoops, it will just be too much. I nearly had a hint of gold in there without me even trying. So I find it easier to paint this way round because I'm painting then away from the building and so my paintbrush is coming towards me. So it's making it a little bit easier. I don't really need to see what it is. I'm just basically painting all the bits that are white. So I'm just painting towards myself really. So it doesn't have to be overly complicated. You just have to paint the white and it's easier to do it coming towards yourself like that, okay? Well, let's do this side and again we'll just come down here but it is when you turn this around that you'll realize the bits you've missed so I am aware that I'm going to have to go back and do a few bits but um, for the moment I'm quite happy with it this way around bring that in up there gap there and because it's white you've got to be a little bit more you know careful with your painting just to make sure you get every little bit that goes on here like so so I know this is not especially Christmassy but because these have come out now and because Christmas is approaching, this is why I've done them, because I think that if you want to have them as Christmas presents, you need to know how to do them now. And that's why I've gone off piece a bit and started to do Harry Potter stuff. Um, although it's all Christmas at the weekend, so I'm not feeling too guilty about it. <laughs> all Saturday mornings have been about Christmas, although it's Sunday this week. Please make sure that if you are watching me, on Let's Shop Kate Live that it is Sunday this week not Saturday so I will be live but it won't be till Sunday morning right so we've done that bit then we're going to bring this round here and paint round here as well bring that round can't be too wrong with that bit can you it's fairly straightforward side so we have beginners cocoa butter painting kits so if you fancy one of those for christmas we have got christmas ones we've also got the ones that go with the beginners courses so if you do want one of those they're on let shop kate live go over there and have a look at them It'd be a good christmas present if you want to get going with kate painting and that includes everything you need to get going and then obviously you choose your courses then 
and decide how you want to access those. So whether you want to go on a membership or whether you just want to buy a course and keep it, that's up to you. Right, how are we doing? Oh, I've gone off screen a little bit. Let's bring you down a bit. There we go. In my enthusiasm to turn it all. Right, OK, so we're going to take this in a little bit around some of these turrets. So we're going to come down a little bit further into some of this, sort of down the side a little bit here. Bit of a gap up there. It's only ever when you turn these things around that you realise what you've missed. But having said that, I haven't missed much, so that's pretty good going. Quite pleased with that so far. And we'll bring it down the side of that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change over. Well, I'll change to zero. Maybe I will. I'll change to zero and see how that goes. And we'll add some black in, a tiny bit of white. I'll do a little bit of outlining. So this will, again, separate the buildings. So we get a bit more detail in there. So this is um, zero. So I might switch back to one in a minute. We'll see how we go. Depends what this brush is going to behave itself. So the zero brush is a little bit smaller. Because I do the majority of my painting with a, a one and two, I'm very used to those brushes. So... Sometimes when I go down to a smaller brush, I'm worse at it than if I'd had a larger brush, quite honestly. So go into here. So we'll make, by putting a little darker line around here, this is going to make this set further back. Okay, you can see it's going across the bottom there as well. So you can see that starting to move backwards a little bit, which is what we want. And then we'll bring this colour down here, down the side, just to kind of highlight that turret there. The zero brush you use to kind of get into the little tiny areas because obviously it is smaller than the paintbrush one. And that's why we do it. So go across here. And then across here, and then we'll come down, and then the side. Oops, got a bit of a lump of black there. We don't want that. Get across there. There you go, you can start seeing it. It's appearing. So what we're doing really with this brush is just kind of bringing that colour right down into the rest of the paint. Like so. Go across there. And so I'm just checking what I did before. Go across there. I always end up doing it slightly differently every time. No matter what I say, it always comes out different. Down here. Now I've gone a, a drift here. Let me come back here. I was outlining buildings and I got sidetracked. So again, the buildings are all there. You're just literally taking your brush and just putting them round the buildings. So you're not doing anything particularly strange. Buildings are there. You're just following along. And just basically moving the paintbrush up and down the side of everything that's there. side right over 
here across the roof there a window there let's put that window in we have our window back and then down there down that side across the bottom just push some black into there down the side of that would be fair okay so we've sort of outlined all the buildings near enough tiny little bit to do that and then with the bridge Again, if you just take your darker colour and just go across the top there, like so, and then just take it down one side. So if we say to the right, it will make it go 3D. about just smudged a tiny bit you can just get a paintbrush and go over that so if you do get a little bit of dark color on the bridge just repaint it there you go problem solved a lot of things like that nice and quick okay so while we've been doing all of that the i'm just going to put a little bit of gray in there that's it the windows have dried so we're going to mix up some white now so let's just clean our brush up before we do that to make sure we've got nothing else in it. Other than huge amounts of grey, because that's not going to help us. We need this to be a clear, bright white. So if you're going to paint with white, it needs to contain E171. E171 is titanium dioxide. Um, it is actually not a product you can get in Europe, but you can get it in the UK. Um, but be very careful if you're buying it in the UK that it actually does have E171 in it because it's a lot brighter than the ones that don't. The ones that don't have it in there are more of a grey colour. They don't paint up very white. So let's give that a bit of a mix. Just so we've got something there. We're going to switch over to these. So these are called dotting tools. They are actually used in nail art, but you can use them in cake decorating as well, as long as you're not using them to do nails and cake decorating <laughs> so you need your own set for cake decorating we do have these on the website they've got different ends so they've got tiny tiny little circle balls on the end of them there you can see one there and they are even more tiny on this end so that's what they consist of so i'm just going to take one of them dip it in the white actually we'll do it with a smaller end dip it in the white and then we're just going to put in the corner the top right hand corner although i smidged that one let me just redo that one. Uh, top right hand corner, a blob of white. So it looks like there's a light on in the building. Okay, so you just do it to the right of the windows. And it just brightens up the whole thing, then it stops it looking quite so um, dark. I'm going to go back to that one I've missed in a second. I need that to dry first before I put white on it. Otherwise it won't. So this does make a lot of difference. It's, it's again, one of those finishing things that you need to do to make it look brighter. Let's see if I can get away with it now. Here we go. My dotting tool went down the window hole and didn't come out again. That's why I lost that one. Okay. So I'm just going to do it on the windows. I'm not going to do it on the turrets. I don't need to do it on the turrets because the turrets haven't got lights on them. I've only got lights on these windows. And they are very, very tiny on some parts. So just put a little tiny dot. When I hold this up at the end, you'll see the difference. You'll see why you need them. I can understand it's quite tricky to see at the moment. Let's keep going. I'll go through this as fast as I can because this bit is a little bit... Just blacked out another window there. 
a little bit of black back in there. Got another white window. Okay, no one's perfect, are they? <laughs> All right, there's some nice big windows here. Let's get these in. So, just recap on the Hogwarts. There are 10 different designs. If you've joined me, um, there are now two more going, have now gone on the website. That is the Sorting Hat and the Dark Mark. So if you want those as well, they are now available. So there is, don't ask me to name them all, but I probably could if I had a push. <laughs> uh, the Hogwarts train is the one that's going to be in short supply because that's the one that we've already got pre-orders for. So if you desperately want Hogwarts train, then you need to crack on with that one. We may get one more delivery before Christmas, but I'm not sure now, to be honest. I think the last delivery we've got coming tomorrow might be it. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Depends, because every time we do one of these lives, they get very, very popular, all the Harry Potter stuff. It goes a bit mad, which is great. And don't forget as well, as I said, apart from stocking fillers, you will be able to use these beyond Christmas. They're not just something that you can use at Christmas and then that's it. You will be able to use them beyond Christmas, which is nice, isn't it? There we go. Right. Have I done it all? Let me just double check and see if I've missed anything. I don't think I have, and I think this paint is better than the one I did before, so that's good. <laughs> There's been an improvement. <laughs> the original one, it's better than the original, so that's what we want. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes you go on a live and it's a disaster, and you think, oh my God, what have I done? But actually, this one I think is fine. It's a little bit better than the original, so I'm happy with that. So there we go. Let me just check I've not missed anything. I don't think I have. Double checking everything. No, I think that's it. So there we go. Let me move these out of the way so you can have a proper look at it and I'll pick it up so you can see it. There we go. So it's taken me about 40 minutes to do it because obviously I did a bit of talking to start with um, and in between, but it's roughly 40 minutes for this one. So the one I did last week was about an hour and 20 minutes. So there are some quick ones in this set. And the Harry Potter cookie cutter looks like this when you get it. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of how to actually get it off the sugar paste as well. With a bit, bit of icing sugar on there, press down hard and then peel it off very gently. Look at how thick I've got it on my cookie just to make sure I could actually remove it. Because otherwise it might be a little bit on the tricky side. Um, in order to be able to get that off. Donna mentioned earlier about potentially using a bit of gold on here, which of course you could. So we've got like Wonder Dust um, Bright Gold, which is a really nice colour as well. So if you wanted to take a little bit of gold, I might try it, Donna. Did I? I haven't blown that candle out. I'm just wondering why it won't mix very well. Let's get a bit going. So if you wanted to put a little bit of gold maybe up on the roof or something or even across the top of the buildings you could put actually you could put a little highlight couldn't you of gold down the side there that would pick up the buildings even more you don't have to put it in all places just a few so you could just put a little bit down there and then of course if it's snowing at hogwarts you could always put a little bit of white snow on there when it comes to it i think i've just put a little highlight of gold on there so this is wonder dust gold you're looking at that there we go let me hold that up so you can see hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of wonder dust on there i can see it better than you i think which is highly unusual because normally the cameras pick it up better but yeah just a little bit of just only a tiny bit just to kind of make it look a tiny bit sparkly yeah. so there you go you could do that as well so that's hogwarts i think it's three pound 89 for the cookie cutter it is not expensive none of them are they are actually quite reasonable so if you do want to have a good go at the harry potter cookie cutters there are eight to ten, i think it's ten of them eight or ten of them i think there's ten now on the website including the two new ones the sorting hat and the dark mark um, which are available and don't forget as well the Hogwarts Express 
is the one that's a little bit limited at the moment that's the train so maybe i'll need to try and paint the train next week or something and <laughs> something along those lines there we go put it there side by side so you can see what it looks like um and there we go i'm going to just blow out that candle before i forget because when i get home sometimes i go did i blow out the candle and then i have to come all the way back down here again to check which is really irritating <laughs> so there we go right i'll just put the address up there so you can see where you can go and get the harry potter cookie cutters from um the video will be on here which you can watch it back and follow if you do get one of these cookie cutters or you want to do it at a later date it will also be available on my youtube channel at tracy man cake so again if you want to follow it at a later date you will be able to find it on there if you go into the live section you will find everything in there to watch including last week's one as well now i need to check my diary to see what i'm doing because it's now started to get incredibly busy before christmas so i need to check to see what i'm available for next week um so my next live is sunday at 10 o'clock so sunday morning 10 o'clock on my facebook page um at let's shop cake live which is where we do all our christmas bits and pieces um this is over kind of a bonus evening at the moment that we're running purely because we have had all the harry potter stuff come in we want to give you an opportunity to have a look at it being used rather than buying something blind i quite like people to be able to see it being used and don't forget also we have tiktok which is at tracy man cakes as well and on there you'll see some very super speedy videos um, that show you how to do things like painting hogwarts there is a hogwarts one on there there is also um, a picture one a step by step of the crest and again if you just scroll through you'll see how that's been built up as well so lots of different options for you in order to be able to make all these lovely things for christmas and beyond because as i say harry potter is not just for christmas thank goodness um so i hope you enjoyed the evening thank you very much to everybody that has tuned in this evening and watched again you can watch it um, um, once the live has finished you can go back and watch it and if you do get one of these and want to paint along with me then you can just pop the video on and follow along so there we go right so bar instagram where i'm live every so often more often than not at the moment i will be live again on sunday morning at 10 o'clock on let's shop kate live until then i will see you all thank you donna for putting up a few links and bits for me um, i will see you all soon